my God. Oh my God. Are you trying to end things? Hi everyone, welcome back to Slightly Kosher. This is our third Passover episode and we are making gefilte fish. We are making it, we are not taking it out of a jar and putting it on a plate. We are with our bare hands going to create a loaf of fish mush, which no one ever does. Nobody does that except for my mom and she is very excited to show us what tips and tricks she has in store. Holy sh yeah. It's certainly um, a cool new thing you could do for Passover this year, and I am excited to show you how to do it. So let's f***ing go. Things you need to make a gefilte fish. Carrots, celery, matzo meal, salt, sugar, limes, three eggs, cooking spray, chicken stock, fish stock if you're feeling rowdy, white pepper, paprika, olive oil, and oh my god, so much fish. So much fish. Am I cute? Here's a tip. Have right, a wow. garbage bowl ready for any scraps when you're peeling vegetables, cracking eggs, different things. They all go in one bowl into the trash. Are you explaining garbage to people? I asked you if I looked cute and you started talking about garbage. Tess is gonna start by peeling mm -hmm. carrots. What is good milk? What is gefilte fish? An excellent question to start. Gefilte fish is if you ever looked at a hot dog and said, I wish all the things in here came from the sea. Gefilte fish is essentially a fish meatloaf. That's not wrong, I was being serious. No. It's a loaf of fish meat. We are peeling three carrots and dicing two celery stalks. Anyone who, who knew me growing up knew that there were two things I could not stand to eat, one of which was tomatoes. I grew out of that eventually. The other was fish, particularly fish that smelled like fish a contingency of more serious Jews will eat it every Friday, Saturday for Shabbat, and it typically looks like that. You can't see it. You can't see it because it's in a cloud of its own filth. Okay, it's a fish meatloaf. It exists because Ashkenazis of yore, who lived in shtetls, who had no money. Oh my God, oh my God. Are you trying to end things? Oh, it smells so bad. Let me just say what a f***ing gefilte fish is, please, I beg of you. The quicker we can do this, the easier it will be for everyone involved. Jews of yore used to make gefilte fish ahead of time because when it, it, technically when it is Shabbat, you're not supposed to be exerting any effort. You're not supposed to be deboning fish. You're not supposed to be um, turning on the oven. You're supposed to be eating things that were made ahead of time that are very easy to just effortlessly spoon into your mouth. This conjunction of fish, most people use um, pike, Liz uses a combination of carp and pike. It became most popular, one, because it was cheap, and two, because fish is another parv thing. You can eat it with all the other things you can eat on Shabbat. What its association is with Passover, I have no idea other than that, as previously discussed, did you just stab me in the leg? Carrots dice too. Okay. As previously discussed on our matzah episode, which I'm sure you watched, so many people watched this show, is that Passover is a holiday <laughs> where we are meant to suffer. So that's really why I'm going to guess gefilte fish is most commonly associated with that holiday. If you know why we eat it on Passover, please do let me know. I'm, I'm legitimately curious to learn why. Um, some people break it out for Rosh Hashanah too. Liz is one of those people, again, because she likes to make it. When are we calling Liz? Let's call her right now. But in the meantime, you are going to take two tablespoons of olive oil, you are going to heat it in a little saute pan, and you are going to put in that oil your diced three carrots and your diced two stalks of celery. Uh, you're gonna cook it for about 10 minutes till it gets mushy. Generally, with gefilte fish, you wanna get as close to mush as possible. Can we be preheating the oven? You can preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Oh, Hi. oh, hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, fine, I just have nine pounds of fish in my fridge, Mom. Well, they made a mistake. I only ordered a pound of each. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for 15 years. Oh, excuse me. Would you say, um, to start, that you were the only person you know who makes gefilte fish? One of very few people? Yes. I mean, I grew up on the stuff out of the jars. I, I used to love the stuff out of the jars. And I cannot stress enough that it's probably one of the easiest upgrades to a standard you could possibly make. Just 
Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you how much fish there is. Well, how much was it? It must have been a fortune. It smells so bad. It smells so bad. It smells like if you, if you lit 10,000 candles that all have fish scents. This is four, four and a half pounds of each. Okay, well, the two most important things here are get it ground from a really good fish longer. And this is the toughest part is tasting it to make sure it's well seasoned. Tasting it like when the fish is raw? No, yeah. What? Wait, see, so you're saying test Mom. and taste raw fish on the camera. I'm saying that in order to really make sure it's seasoned well, Put a tiny bit on your tongue to make sure you can, you feel some salt in it. She may bother. Mom, can you ask Dad if he knows why we eat gefilte fish specifically on Passover? Do you know why we eat gefilte fish on Passover? Historically speaking, oh, Daddy has all these stories about how they'd bring live carp home and put it in the bathtub and, and, um, you know, they'd club the head and kill it. I don't know. There's all kinds and of strange. Grandma Remember? and Grandpa did that? Yeah, didn't Grandma and Grandpa? <laughs> you? Oh. Momo was clubbing live carp in the bathtub of their apartment. Oh, and Daddy's saying it wasn't a small carp. How many pounds? <laughs> the whole family was coming. This helps me better understand my father. This has been enlightening in so many ways. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Raj. Bye. Bye. My grandparents beat fish to death in a bathtub. So, in what I assume is an attempt to keep this soft fish loaf together, you add a quarter cup of matzo meal. Stop it right now. Don't be ridiculous. I'm gonna keep the speed low because I'm really afraid of everything happening here today. You ready to get into it? We have nicely combined eggs and matzo meal in here. Three quarters of a cup of chicken stock. Amazing. Two teaspoons of salt. Let's just do that and just regroup every time. All right. One, this already looks, it looks like something that's not gonna be cute at any stage. But okay, great. We have two teaspoons of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar. Granulated is fine. I'm giving it a little bit more. I would prefer this skewed sweet rather than fish. Three quarters of a teaspoon of ground white pepper. That's important. I think gives it the funk it's so desperately needing. The carrot celery mixture. I don't have the capacity to care about that right now. And it is at this point that you look down at your nine pounds of fish and you say, how can I best? <clears throat> I know it's not funny that I continue to gag. It just really smells awful. I can take my wedding band off. <laughs> I think it's for the best. <gasps> oh my God, it's so crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't look. What is it? I saw I saw a, a fin. Oh my god, Michael. This is a disaster. <laughs> I can't I saw an eyeball! I saw an eyeball. There's an eyeball on a fish. I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh. That's why it's nine f***ing pounds. Oh, they left the intestines on the inside. Oh. oh my God. Oh my God. Who is this fish's manager? Hello? They didn't grind the fish. It's a whole fish. Not only did they not grind the fish, they left the guts and everything inside. Holy shit. Yeah.
What's what's the state of that one? Oh, that one just looks like the world's biggest brain. No, this is ground up. Ugh. Oh. What? They ground it up, and then they also gave you, I think. I told my mom to do that, but let me see. Then there is, you just throw that out. Let me see. Okay, that's the ground. That's all you want. You don't want the rest. You're you're fine. Oh my God! It's like they pranked Tess and they knew it. I can't talk anymore. Goodbye. Instant reaction. Jimmy, how are you feeling right now? Never better. Okay. So this is this is ground pike and ground carp. That's why it's different colors. Like okay. a brain that's decayed for a while. I don't think we should ask any more questions. I think we should just do it and get the f out. I think we should move out of this apartment <laughs> and leave the city altogether. And I think we should throw fish guts at like Trump Tower on the way out. Like that's <laughs> just like <laughs> All right. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. We took a minute. We regrouped. Michael said I couldn't be a little and wear a mask the whole time. That was all I needed to hear. Set me on the right path. Okay. Without further ado. Looks like Carl Rove. Turn it over. Oh. Oh my God, oh my God, our whole apartment is gonna smell like. Okay, 4.6 pounds, so I'm just trying to gauge how much would be half of it. Okay, so this is four and a half pounds. Oh. Ew, that honestly, I can't even, I can't. I have no funny comparisons. Imagine wanting to do this. Okay, I, I can't talk about it anymore, this is, this is not, only not fun, it's not educational. This is, this is about as miserable as I've been in a very long time. If you said to me you could roast under the Florida sun for 12 hours without sunscreen or make a gefilte fish, I would say get me to Florida. Have you ever seen anything less appetizing? Ready? Whoa! Oh. Oh. We're gonna crush through this as though everything is fine. I don't know how, how greasy or not greasy it needs to be, so I'm going to overcompensate and assume it needs um, the lubrication. Okay. It's like viscous. I mean, I will say, it does look like a gefilte fish already. I'm still so stuck on the fact that my mom was like, this is easy and fun. Okay. She's smoothing out fish. That's I really would appreciate silence in this moment. Ugh. Okay, great. Um, cutting up a lime, just gonna squeeze. I don't care if there are seeds in it. This is of no consequence to me. And I'm not gonna measure the paprika, I'm just gonna sprinkle. I feel like normally I'm very good at like food analogy, like um, telling you what the food I'm making looks like that is not food, and here I have nothing for you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. In the oven, 350, for 50 to 60 minutes, and we're gonna stick a skewer thing in it. If it comes out clean, without fish guts, we'll know it's good, then we're gonna cover it in tin foil, let it marinate in its own f***ing juices overnight. Take it out tomorrow morning and slice it, but I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, okay? Ugh. Good night, sweet prince. Okay, it has been 60 minutes. We're going to remove our fish loaf from the oven. It's not gonna look good, but it's gonna look cooked. We're gonna skewer it. We're gonna hope it comes out not totally wet. If it's soaking wet, something has gone wrong. Maybe too many intestines, I don't know. I have been told by my EP that the episode is skewing too negative, so let me put on a happy face for you and tell you how thrilled I am to be taking my fish loaf out of the oven. Oh, it rose like a fish souffle. Okay. It looks awesome. 
I think it smells really good. It smells like when you drive through Secaucus with your windows down. I can't, I can't stick my face over it because it feels like a fish facial, which is just disgusting. Okay, so far it is like meatloafy consistency. It looks like it came out pretty clean. Yeah, this feels fine to me. Um, there's no gigantic clumps of fish. Nothing is, is wet or gloopy. Um, that is cooked. Are you sure we can't leave it on the balcony? Yeah. I think it'll be fine. Nope. Good morning. We have good attitudes today. We are going to take this loaf of congealed fish guts, dump it out onto a cutting board, slice it into slices, cover it with parsley and horseradish, take a bite, smile through it. it this is still too negative. Okay, that looks like a filter fish. It smells like a filter fish, which in some ways is a nice smell in that it reminds me of Seder and I love Seder. Okay, ready? The less we hesitate. Okay, well now it's wrong side up so I have to flip it again. <laughs> I didn't think this through. Use your hand. No, really? Yeah, you want me to do it? No. We've come this far. Pick it up. As I had mentioned, some juicing. Um, okay. That is, uh, feels a little bit porous. Smells a lot less fishy. Um, I'm, I'm curious how sweet it will be. I can't imagine this is in any way sweet. But this is good though. This is legitimately a gefilte fish. A homemade one. I'm gonna give you the honor of the first bite. I really think it's the least I could do. Boop. Oh God, please don't boop gefilte fish. Yeah, really get in there. Texture's good. Okay. I'm actually gonna taste it without the horseradish first. Perfect. So it's really got a texture that's firm, but uh -huh. also not grainy and mealy. It okay. has some chew to it, but not too much has a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of salt, but really not much. And you can taste the fish, but it's not overwhelming. I love you, but I don't like looking at you when you eat gefilte filter fish, it's not nice. Now let me get a big bite of horse Yeah, get in there. That, that's Passover. That's Passover? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. That's good. Would you eat it on a more consistent basis, on Shabbat? I would, I would, I would eat this any holiday. Put hair on your chest. Ew, okay. Now your turn. Take a bite. Okay. Here goes. You gotta put it in. That's what she's doing. That tastes like how I imagine our apartment rug smells now. <laughs> it's good. No. If someone wants to learn how to make a filter fish, this is it. This is an excellent gefilte fish. No holds barred. Let's let's just put it out there definitively for everyone to know. Does it taste supremely fishy? Yes. I actually don't think it tastes fishy at all. Okay, I think it tastes like the fishiest thing I've ever eaten. Is it a little bit sweet? Sure. Is it salty? Not as salty as I, I would have hit it with more salt, maybe. No. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about, and you apparently don't eat he does. Fish. I think it's got a right amount of salt where you don't you get just a little bit of salt. Silence, please. The conclusion here is that we've made a perfect f***ing gefilte fish. End of episode. It's been real. This has been the final Passover episode of Slightly Kosher. As always, has been real. Ugh, don't come near me. <laughs>